huge airliners crash over Haryana in India's worst ever aviation accident and also India's worst ever mid-air collision. How did two such huge advanced airplanes end up at exactly the same place and exactly the same time? We're gonna find out today in Cockpit Stories episode 7. of 12th November 1996. A Saudi Arabian Airlines Boeing 747 is doing a flight from Delhi to Dehran. It's a regular scheduled flight, goes three times a week and the flight is absolutely on time. The aircraft takes off from Delhi and is now headed towards Dehran through the single airway or the single corridor which takes airplanes from Delhi towards the Middle East. Now the other airplane is a Russian built IL-76, another huge aircraft with four engines. This flight is coming from Kazakhstan to Delhi as a charter flight. A charter flight is basically when someone hires an aircraft to go from A to B. So this airplane has been hired by a few rich people who are coming to Delhi to do some shopping. So the Saudi Arabian Boeing 747 takes off from Delhi on schedule and is at 10,000 feet. At which point, the pilot informs the ATC that he has reached 10,000 feet and requests for further climb. The ATC tells him that you are cleared to climb to 14,000 feet. Also, at the same time, the incoming Russian aircraft contacts Delhi ATC and informs them that he is passing 19,000 feet. Upon which, Delhi ATC instructs him that you are now cleared to descend down to 15,000 feet. So now the current situation is that the Saudi Arabian Airlines 747 has been cleared to climb to 14,000 feet and the Russian aircraft has been cleared to descend down to 15,000 feet. Before I continue the story, two very important things which played a very major part in this accident. Number one is, at that time, from Delhi, there used to be only one corridor for outgoing as well as incoming airplanes which were proceeding to or coming from the Middle East. So, the aircrafts had to be separated by altitude, like in this case, uh, wherein the aircraft was separated by 1000 feet. So that's how the separation was given because there was only one single route for departing as well as incoming aircrafts to Delhi. Now the second thing which was a major cause in the accident was the lack of something known as secondary surveillance radar at Delhi airport. At that time Delhi only had a primary radar. Now a primary radar is a primitive technology which provides the air traffic controller with only two things. One is the direction of the aircraft and second is how far is the aircraft from the radar. So the secondary surveillance radar in addition to these two things also provides the air traffic controller with altitude information. What altitude is each particular aircraft maintaining. However at that time Delhi did not have a secondary surveillance radar. As a result the air traffic controller had absolutely no idea what altitudes aircrafts were maintaining. He had to rely on information which was passed on to the air traffic controller by the aircrafts through radio communication. Now back to our accident. So right now we have two airplanes, a Boeing 747 and an IL-76 going directly head on to each other. However, they are separated by an altitude of 1000 feet. The air traffic controller at Delhi also informed both the aircrafts about the presence of each other. So he told the Russian aircraft about the 747 and he also told the 747 about the presence of the Russian aircraft in the vicinity. However, there was a problem on board the Russian aircraft. Pilots on the Russian aircraft were not very fluent in English. Now English is the standard language for aviation across the world. Any country you go to, you will always be talking to the ATC, to each other, to anyone in English and English only. However, these Russian pilots were not very fluent with English. But they did have a radio telephony operator on board the aircraft. So this guy's job was to speak to the ATC and he was okay okay with English. He didn't have much problem. However, this radio telephony operator on board the IL-76 did not have flight instruments of his own. So he would sit in the cockpit behind the pilots where he would have his radio telephony controls. However, he would not have any flight instruments telling him the current status of the aircraft. To see what altitude or what airspeed the aircraft is maintaining, this radio telephony operator had to look over the pilot's shoulders and see the current aircraft status. Also, another problem on board the Russian aircraft was, at that time, Russia used to operate in metric units, which meant aircraft used to tell their height in terms of meters 
and their speed in terms of kilometers. However, the standardized thing in aviation which everyone uses except very few countries like Russia and China is nautical miles and feet. So in aviation all vertical heights are always reported in feet and all lateral distances are always reported in nautical miles. However, the Russians were not very used to this because they were used to flying in Russia and Russia mein kya use ho raha tha? Russia was only using meters and kilometers. Now because of the language barrier and the different units being used, the Russian pilots made a mistake. Instead of maintaining 15,000 feet like they were told to, they actually ended up descending below 15,000 feet. Now remember at 14,000 feet was the Saudi Arabian 747 coming straight on for the IL-76. So now the Russian airplane descended below 15,000 feet and it actually reached almost 14,000 feet. By the time the radio telephony operator saw over the pilot's shoulders to look at the current altitude, it was too late. He saw that the aircraft had descended below 15,000 feet. He shouted that start climbing, we were only clear to descend to 15,000 feet. As a result, the Russian pilots pulled up the nose of the aircraft, but it was too late. The Saudi 747 was right in front of them and they both collided mid-air. Now the interesting thing is, as per the DFDR data, had the radio telephony operator not asked the Russian pilots to start climbing again, the aircraft would have passed very close to each other with the Russian aircraft being below the 747. However, due to this last minute pulling up of the Russian aircraft, it ended up colliding with the 747 in flight. The tail of the IL-76 cut through the wing of the 747 and the horizontal stabilizer as well. Now if you have that big a collision in flight, your airplane is totally uncontrollable. The 747 went into a spiraling dive totally out of control and crashed into the ground at almost 1200 km an hour. It also disintegrated in flight because it was totally uncontrolled. The cockpit voice recorder on both the 747 recorded the last words of the 747 pilots, which was a prayer which is said in Arabic just before death. And those were sadly the last words of those pilots. The IL-76 was still stable but in an uncontrolled dive. Because the aircraft was damaged, the pilots could not control the airplane and it went into a dive and went straight into the ground. The accident was not head on. Two airplanes did not go nose to nose into each other. The IL-76 windshield was actually found intact after the crash. The vertical stabilizer of the Russian aircraft had gone through the wings and the body of the 747 like a hot knife through butter only traveling at 1000 km an hour. And as a result, very sadly, 351 people, majority of whom were laborers from India who were going to Saudi to work, all of them died. The interesting part however is, some people actually survived the crash. So after such a horrific crash and after literally going into the ground at unimaginable speeds, some people actually lived. However, sadly, they eventually died because of their injuries, internal or external. Now you might ask that if the Russian aircraft made a mistake, why did they not see each other physically and take evasive action? The reason is this happened when both the airplanes were sadly inside a cloud. So when an airplane enters a cloud, the visibility all around is very less. So they could not see each other coming head on and thus they could not take evasive action. Now some of you might ask, why was there no TCAS warnings? So for those of you who do not know, TCAS stands for Traffic Collision Avoidance System. It's a system on board the aircraft which warns the pilot if there's another aircraft in the vicinity and is about to collide with that aircraft. In 1996, these systems were not mandatory. As of today, they are required on all passenger jets. However, back in those days, they were not mandatory. And as a result, sadly, they were not there on both the aircrafts. Now, let me give you some interesting facts about this very sad accident. Both the aircrafts, when they collided, were going at a relative speed of 1000 km an hour. I'm sure you can imagine how fast that is. When they collided in flight, since both of them were very huge airplanes, the total weight of the debris which landed on Charkhidadri and the surrounding villages was about 500 tons. That's almost equal to about 6,000 sedan cars just raining from the sky. Another very interesting fact is my parents actually saw this accident. So since you guys know I'm from Haryana, but I was too little back then. 
but my parents actually heard and they saw the accident they actually saw the whole sky light up orange and they actually heard the huge sound made by two airplanes crashing in the air after this accident a lot of changes were made there were separate corridors made in Delhi for departing and incoming aircrafts headed towards the Middle East. Also in Delhi, a secondary surveillance radar was installed. Another very good thing which came up was TCAS became mandatory for all passenger aircrafts. So if you want to operate an aircraft in India now, you need to have a traffic collision avoidance system on board the aircraft. So that was the sad story of how 351 people lost their lives because a pilot could not maintain the altitude that he was assigned. The air traffic controllers were not blamed in this situation because they did their job perfectly. The whole blame was put on the Russian pilots who did not understand air traffic communication and made the mistake of descending into the Saudi Arabian 747's flight path. That's all from me for this episode of Cockpit Stories. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please do subscribe to the channel guys. Thank you so much for the love that I've been getting recently. Thank you so much for all the great subscriptions that I've been getting. and. Also, as always, 100k very soon. And that's your boy Tapesh Kumar signing off. I'll see you in the next one.